So hey, uh, how's everybody doing this afternoon? Um, quick question, it's a uh, very politically charged uh, world we live in uh, these days, so I, I wanted to do a quick survey. Uh, so don't be afraid to raise your hand when I ask the question. So uh, who's, who's for the Cubs? We got a, we got a big one, and, and, and the Indians? There we go. All right, so it's 50-50, we'll see what happens. So hey, uh, I'm Dan Gilmartin, uh, CMO of a company called PingUp. Uh, do we have a, a clicker for the slides? Sorry about that. So, and joining me is uh, Sergio Silva, who's the uh, director of partner success over at Kick. Um, just a, a real quick slide on PingUp. Uh, we're a platform that aggregates supply of local services uh, through APIs with uh, booking partners uh, and drive them uh, through a uh, call to action on search engines, directories, and social platforms for consumers to book and engage with uh, local businesses. Uh, we see about 250 million searches uh, available through our network, about 180,000 uh, different businesses on the platform, uh, and we service the financial service industry, uh, health and wellness, um, uh, automotive, and a couple other uh, platforms, or a couple other verticals. Uh, Sergio here from uh, Kick uh, is a messaging platform, 300 million uh, users, uh, most, mostly in North America, right? We are predominantly based in the U.S., 70 percent U.S. teens, so really focused on the young millennials and the teen audience here in the U.S. And, and pretty, pretty great engagement, uh, about an hour and a half weekly uh, use of the product, uh, which is great. So uh, we did a survey uh, this month focus specifically on chatbots, uh, really looking to understand uh, what the usage is, what the interest and the intent of the individual is relative to uh, engaging in chatbots. Uh, we talked to folks that are using Kik, uh, folks that are using uh, Facebook Messenger, um, Slack, and so on, about five different platforms. Uh, spoke to about a thousand people. Uh, the results, the broader results of the survey are going to be out uh, on Thursday morning. We'll have a press release and uh, a uh, infographic along with that. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the results that we saw uh, relative to that survey and, and uh, get into a little bit about what we're doing. And then uh, Sergio and I are going to have a little fireside chat about what we think is going to happen uh, relative to some key areas of interest and challenges uh, for bots going forward. So um, uh, David this morning talked about uh, bots um, perhaps being a fad and uh, maybe they're not going to be as important to us uh, from a topic perspective next year, uh, but our survey showed that 30% um, of the chatbot users have specifically engaged uh, and, and communicated with a local business. So uh, I think we're, we're pretty encouraged uh, from that perspective uh, that, that um, uh, people are engaging. They're, they're looking to uh, find out uh, and, and engage with those local businesses. Um, they've reported, 50% have reported an increase in um, their, um, um, you know, how, they're, how they're feeling about that business uh, that they've talked to, uh, a, a more positive experience, uh, if you will, uh, having engaged with that user uh, or with that business. 25% um, quarter of the responders um, uh, prefer, actually from a preference perspective, have said we'd rather communicate uh, via messaging or via bots with a local business. Uh, that goes up to 37%. Uh, when we're talking about the, uh, the millennial audience. Um, so we dove in a little bit deeper on specific interests uh, relative to uh, how folks want to engage uh, with a bot, uh, specifically to local. And, and one of the big things that came back, 33% of the users uh, in the millennial segment uh, said they wanted to uh, communicate and, and talk to local businesses uh, specifically around food ordering. Um, so, so an interesting area for us, and I'll, I'll talk about what we did uh, on that one in just a moment. Um, but generally, 35% of all the responders and, and uh, over half of the millennial responders said they wanted to use a chatbot uh, to take some form of action uh, with a local business. So uh, I think we're pretty encouraged by what we've seen and what we've heard uh, from our audience uh, and, and, and the, the prospects of using a bot uh, to communicate um, and engage a, a local business. So one of the things that we did um, and launched on the Kick platform, uh, gosh, about 10 days ago, uh, was a food ordering bot. 
uh, called Order Now. So we aggregated over 100,000 um, uh, local food ordering establishments uh, that are available for delivery or takeout. Uh, and that stat there, 30,000 new chatters in 10 days. Um, I think that that's a, a great indicator of demand. Uh, the number's wrong. We actually added another 12,000 yesterday, so we're probably closer to 45,000 uh, in 10 days. So uh, we see interesting demand uh, from the user base uh, in, in a bot, specifically on Kik. Uh, we're quite encouraged. Um, and 20% engagement rate shows that uh, once they download the bot, once they start to engage it, um, there's interest in going further. It's, it's not just a novelty. Um, we don't have uh, numbers on orders yet. We think it's a little early. Uh, there's a lot of discovery going on. Is the restaurant that I like available? What's the experience and what are the menus and so on? So with that, uh, we're going to get into the uh, opportunities and challenges, a little fireside chat here, uh, relative to uh, the bot experience and, and really looking to Sergio and, and, and the Kick uh, team to, to give us their perspective on what's going on in bots. You guys have done this a lot more than we have. Um, but when we look at the verticals, uh, we did food, uh, we do health and beauty, we do automotive, uh, and, and you know, across our network to engage, to, to allow a consumer to book with uh, a local business. But what other verticals do you think are prime uh, as an opportunity for developers like us or, or other platforms out there? So I think because of our demographic, and I can only speak for Kick, we do skew younger. A lot of our audience is between 13 to 18 and then the next big chunk is 18 to 24. So we're really focused on in that demographic, entertainment, music, um, TV, film. And then apart from that, we just launched a fashion and beauty section. So fashion and beauty for that, that group or that segment is pretty high. So what we've just done in related to the fashion and beauty section, we created sort of two or three sets of types of bots. The first one were brand experiences. The other ones we, we created were really brand agnostic bots. So what they did, they helped users you know, become aware of their latest look. They weren't actually developed for, um, they're more along the, the top of the funnel type of bots, which then took you to another bot, which was like a H&M bot, which is further down the funnel. So we think that the trend now, when we look at the type of verticals interested for our audience, health, beauty, um, film and entertainment as, as a category that we also think there's an opportunity there for brand agnostic bots that actually help or assist users in deciding what to do next or deciding what what beauty makeup to and influencers as well are very big on the platform as well we're starting to look at how we integrate influencers into brand experiences so is it about the experience uh, the engagement uh, that that captures users imagination or attention and to drive them to a local establishment? I know you have Sephora on the platform. Is that something where they're, they're, the experience is to drive into store to buy? That's right. So then, so what we're looking at then, exactly right. So we've got H&M or other brands or other local brands at the bottom of the funnel. And then we're using, and anyone can create one, create another service or some sort of utility where it helps users to then select or search the right product or service. And then what we then, and when you think about that, as a, if you look at, if you try and segment bots across the funnel, you've got ones that are driven more around awareness. You've got other ones that close this, the deal. And so then what we have a trend happening now is we've got our bot to bot interactions, which is really interesting. For sure. Um, one other area that, that I'm sort of curious about, um, uh, Steve from uh, Foursquare was here earlier and uh, I saw his, uh, his bot. So what about local discovery? Is that something I, I want to find a great uh, restaurant to go to or a uh, great coffee shop or, or you know, local venues that I want to engage in? Is, is that a future that you see? Yeah, that's sort of what we have done with the fashion and beauties example, that it will be a trend because how many bots will people then talk to? I think that will then, you'll talk to maybe three or, you know, there is, there's a couple of theories. In that use case, I can talk to maybe four or five mm -hmm. and then get that bot to point me to multiple other bots. That's how I would use that use case. Makes sense. Makes sense. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, payments. Uh, so, so I think about transactions. Our, our business is driven by transactions. Um, 
what do payments look like in a bot experience? Am I gonna, is a, is a bot gonna ask me for my credit card details and I'm gonna type that in? How, what does this look like and how does it work? It's a good question. Um, the, I think what will happen is there will be multiple payment options that uh, you can start to see Facebook Messenger doing a deal yesterday with PayPal um, as one payment option. They'll also roll out you know, MasterCard Visa options. And then there will be other, other options where you'll use will be virtual <coughs> currency, I think, as another model. You'll also see um, other, like we mentioned before, bot-to-bot -bot transactions. So there'll be other bots that will be create and facilitate the sale of the transaction. Th does, does Kick become a, a uh, sort of a platform that stores my payment credentials and, and anywhere I go, any bot I engage in, I can just say, you know, pay now, kind of like an Apple Pay and Hotel Tonight. I did that last night. It was yeah, I think, yeah, perfect. Yeah, at Kick, I think we're mainly focused on engagement rather than pay, like how do we monetize bots. I think today we haven't seen the killer bot experience yet. And we're really, fo this is across all platforms, and we're really, well, my team is really focused on building those inspirational bots that then the rest of the industry will then follow. So we're trying to create, a lead, create some leadership in defining what is that killer bot experience. And I think monetization is, is still too early. We still, we've only been six months out. The APIs for across all the platforms have only been in existence for six months. So I think the focus needs to be on how do we engage users? How do we provide them, either entertain them, or how do we then provide utility so they can keep coming back? So, so speaking of um, killer experiences, um, uh, code scanning, uh, stickers on doorways uh, in local, um, WeChat, I mean, I, I don't think you can go anywhere without reading an interesting story about how users are walking up to a store, walking up to a physical establishment, scanning a code, and then instantly engaging in that business. Um, are we gonna see it here in North America? And, and, and what does it look like if we do? So interesting about WeChat is there are more websites, well, sorry, there are more bots being built than there are websites each day. So the fact that do we think that chat is here, will be translated here in North America? The answer is yes. How will it translate in North America? I don't think we know yet. We haven't had that Pokemon Go moment of how, you know, how we use kick codes or, or code chat codes in general. What we're trying to do is actually trying to translate that for the industry. We recently launched a coffee bot experience at, another, at an event where you could scan a code, order a coffee, and skip the line without having to go up to the barista. In addition to that, we had the coffee bot, which was an Australian barista, of course, and we had that talk to the, each individual and to start to tell them jokes, Australian jokes. So while they order, when they ordered their coffee, we would then use those conversations to profile the user. Then we had codes on coffee cups. So once, so we use that. The thinking behind that is you can use then codes as a lead generator as well. So not only did, so what we're trying to do, what we try to do is you scan the code, you get a customer, gives them the opportunity then to re-engage at a later stage if they don't actually buy a coffee. So that's how they use it in WeChat in China. They use it to follow companies, local businesses, but you can also use it to re-engage users or, or promote any specific campaigns that you're running back to the user at a later stage as well. Makes sense. So um, you, you mentioned profiling. Um, profiling, machine learning, AI. Um, you know, we've, we've built this bot. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's fairly simple at this point. Um, but, but we have debates in the office about how do we make this thing more intelligent? Uh, how do we better understand the intention of the user as they engage? You know, they pick a cuisine, then they pick a restaurant, then they got to go through a menu. What, what are you seeing and, and what do you anticipate changing relative to the experience that we talked about before? The, the whole experience has got to improve. Um, but, but how is machine learning, how are AI going to impact? Look, I think AI is very, uh, uh, is a bit too early now, like the focus now, it seems on industry is to actually focus on AI and work out what the intent is and work out um, NLP and a whole bunch of other things. What we use to make uh, conversations way more efficient is use conversation, what we call suggested responses, which is they're basically smart buttons that help guide conversations through a chatbot 
and we find that that is way more efficient than using NLP or, or AI. AI will take a place, will have a place on the back end integration to optimize those user or those chat experiences. So I think AI will come probably in six months time once we figure out what it is, how we engage with users today. The, the user experience driving what the back end is gonna That's right. empower. Yep. Great, great. Uh, well I think we're just about out of time. I don't know if we have uh, just a, maybe one, one question from the audience. Go ahead. apps, um, text messaging, website integration? So the question is, uh, are chat apps, so are apps more engaging than chat apps, or? Or how users are communicating to businesses? It'll be, um, well we believe that um, bots are the new apps. You've got one conversational interface that you need to build to and design to, the platform's job will then be able to then build richer experiences within that chat conversation. So users don't actually have to learn a new interface. Unlike apps where each app is completely different, you have to relearn each time you download an app. And also two thirds of people aren't even downloading apps in the US today. So that's the trend so far. So we believe that chat apps will be the, one, the way that we communicate to multiple apps on one platform or multiple platforms. Super, I'm, I'm think sorry, that's just to be more clear, uh, are you suggesting that like, the back end platform is more important than the actual endpoint using Facebook or using uh, Twitter potentially or even some sort of inter inter interaction with your website or app publishers? Is, what's the actual last mile of communication? Is there a golden standard that we should look for or is it just the concept of AI? Um. I'm not sure I un actually understand what you're asking, to be honest. Like, is, is it the backend integrations with AI? So the backend integrations will facilitate AI and machine learning. There are billions of text messages. Correct, that's right. right. So I'm, I'm just asking the communication, the actual channel of communication. What do you foresee as the future of, uh, to, to embrace this from a user's perspective, what is the, fu the future communication channel? Um, I think the, I mean, the future in terms of AI, you've got Google investing a lot in AI. You have, um, it's got to start to predict the things that you want is where the future will be. Instead of having suggested responses that actually drive a basic decision tree, the machine learning will then predict what you will then want to ask for, so you do it in advance. So it will integrate up multiple backend systems to then drive within a single user interface that will work on multiple platforms. So we'll have a chat service, and then we'll have like Facebook, Kick, Telegram, Slack that sit over the top. And it'll funnel through all the different databases underneath. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just jump in here and just say thank you very much. We've gotta, <laughs> we've gotta get, right, thank sorry. you so much, really appreciate it.